This is my TVC mount, and it sucks. Why? Well, it was a cause of failure in both Flight 1 and Flight 2 of my Thrust Factor Controlled Rocket Elevate. And if you don't know what TVC is, it's essentially a method of controlling rockets and missiles. Wait, do you guys hear? FBI, open up! And if you don't know what TVC is, essentially it's a method of controlling rockets and other things to point in direction by gambling the thrust. My previous version failed because of its excessive slop and faulty screw connections. So over the past couple weeks, I redesigned it from scratch. This is what I'll be talking about today. If you'd also like to learn about the flights, controller, or computer, check out my previous videos. Now let's get into it. Before jumping into CAD, I sketched out a few designs as it's much faster to tweak, sketch, than to redesign failed prototypes. Trust me, I learned the hard way. My main goals were to increase simplicity and strength and to lower tolerances to improve overall reliability and precision. This led me to stick with the original inner, outer gimbal mount design with the servos on the sides. I also paid special attention to the servo mounts. In the previous design, the walls were too thin, which meant that it wasn't kept in place properly. Now, for specific parts. Given the inaccuracy of the previous servos and push rods, I switched to the MG90D servos for the precision and torque, as well as custom servo horns and push rods to significantly reduce wiggle. Speaking of precision, let me quickly mention the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. If you're like me, you love building cool stuff, but don't always have the time or tools to do everything as accurately as you need. That's where PCBWay comes in. They do CNC machining, 3D printing, PCB fabrication, you name it, they probably have it. Plus, they're running a holiday sale right now with deals up to 50% off. They've been awesome to work with, and I'll definitely use them for my next flight computer. Thank you, PCBWay, for sponsoring this video, and now let's get back into it. After choosing components and the best sketch, I began CAD starting with the motor holder. This time I made it thicker to increase thread engagement and also optimized the height to cut some of the weight. I then designed the inner gimbal, ensuring that there was enough room for it to move freely within the airframe and that the connections to the motor were close enough to reduce slop while not limiting movement. Next, I moved on to the outer with a very similar process. Something I consistently noticed was how difficult it was to get this to fit and move cleanly without hitting the airframe. To illustrate this, here's a visualization of the mount moving within the airframe. See what I mean? It's almost as though someone way more experienced than me recommended switching to larger rockets. If I were starting this from scratch, I think it would be a lot easier in terms of the flight time, actually fabricating parts, keeping your mass budget in check. I think it would be easier if it were like three or four times as big. Three or four times as big. Hey, you. Yeah, look me in the eyes. Let me make bad decisions, okay? Capiche, kaposh. One more thing. You see these holes that are meant to loosely fit screws? You know, it might be a good idea to make those larger so the screws can actually move around a little. Nah, it's probably fine. Somehow, it took me six prints to get the right dimensions. Six. Anyways, with the redesign complete, it's finally time to test this bad boy. First, let's compare the slot. We can see that the previous mount has a significant amount of wiggle, while the second is quite rigid. This becomes even more apparent when shown side by side. And finally, the simple gimbal test. Oh yeah. That is some smooth stuff. This is way better than before. It's worth noting though that this precision comes at a cost. The new mount is more heavy and more costly than the previous design. However, I believe this is well worth it for the accuracy we achieve. Well, that's pretty much it, at least for now. I plan to more rigorously test this once my new flight computer is completed and also reprint the entire assembly using carbon fiber reinforced nylon filament and a higher infill to ensure maximum rigidity. Want to see more of this madness? Hit that subscribe and check out the earlier videos for the full story. See ya.